I traveled all the way down to the Gulf Coast, Southern Mississippi, and one of my desires was to shoot a video on bird watching, to head out into the salt marsh and uh, the, the kind of the coastal areas. And, and you know what? Sometimes nature has a different plan. Check this out. Oh, this is fantastic. I got a little rough green snake. Check him out. Isn't he amazing? Let go. He's holding on to those little pieces of grass. He's a little tiny one. This little guy. So I'm out here bird watching, right? And I'm looking out over everything, checking things out. And I just glance down and I see that little tiny piece of tail. At first I thought it was a Thought it was a, a, a green annel. They're real common around this. I'm in Southern Mississippi. They're real common around here. And I just thought, man, little green annel. No, there was no legs on that green annel. Look at him. Isn't he fantastic? Come on, look at the camera. There we go. So, you know, this guy doesn't feel right. You know, rough green snakes have scales. They have keels. Their scales are ridged. And there's no ridges on this guy's, this guy's smooth. Okay, the smooth green snakes are only way, way up north. They're not down here in the southern parts of Mississippi. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. There is another snake. Hang on just a second. All right, a little trick. If you got binoculars and you don't have a magnifying glass, flip them around backwards. You can magnify with binoculars. All right, I need, give me just a second. I'm gonna mark my thumbnail with a little line. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna give me a reference point. Cause what I have to do is I have to do a scale count on this guy. So I'm gonna hold the animal right there and as I move my hand, I'm gonna, I have to count the scales on his back. The scale count, as I'm counting the scales on his back, that helps to indicate what kind of animal, what species this is. So, let's see here. Got my thumbnail as a reference. Two, three, shoot, hold on. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Hold still, hold still, hold still. Hold still, buddy, there we go. All right. Uh, he keeps moving. Let's try it like this. There we go. Seventeen scales on his dorsal, on the back. Seventeen scales. What that means is this little guy right here is not a rough green snake. This is a yellow. Come here, come here. This is a yellow-bellied uh, racer. This is a yellow-bellied racer. This is a um, one of the subspecies of the the black racers that are in this area. This is the yellow belt. They also have that kind of greenish back with a yellow to white belly, but their scales are smooth. Come here, their scales are smooth. And he does have really big eyes. The racers are characteristic of having really, really big eyes. And he does have very large eyes. You can look at the, there, hey, hello, hello. Aren't you cute? Uh, these guys are gonna live around. They do exist similar habitats as to the rough greens. Uh, they're kind of in this brushy, uh, semi-aquatic habitat, although these guys will range further in. They'll be in meadows and open woodlands and other areas. Uh, basically, the racers, they're a, they're a grab and eat kind of a snake, and they'll eat pretty much anything smaller than them. 
anything smaller than look at that a yellow bellied racer he's so cute these guys get much much bigger than this by the way much bigger than this all right okay i'm gonna let you go you're all stressed he's like breathing really crazy all right i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna let you go all right nice right back where you were buddy right back where you were there you go go hunt very cool yellow belly racer So day two of the bird watching adventure, I'm trying to whistle in a towhee. The Eastern towhee is kind of cool because they have this little whistle that kind of says their name like that. And oftentimes if you mimic that, you can draw them in and they will come to the, the trees right around you, which is really, really kind of cool. So I've been trying to bring them in because there's one I'm hearing whistling out there deeper in the woods. course now that I had the camera on I'm not hearing them anymore which is typical of what happens oh my gosh yet another bird watching adventure interrupted by a reptile check it out can you see her? I don't know if you can see her down the trail hang on This, this is awesome. This is a female, that's a female, female Gulf Coast box turtle. This is the Gulf Coast one. This is the largest of the subspecies of the Eastern box turtle. And she just, she must've crawled right out. It was raining last night. It rained most of the night. And uh, normally when you're on these trails, you can hear them moving through the undergrowth and stuff like that. But with all the rain, everything's really silent. So she had just crawled out and was sitting in the sunlight over there and, uh, and I guess getting ready to cross the trail or whatever. Oh, you're gonna come out and say hello? Notice that with these girls right here, now this is a girl, she doesn't have red eye. Uh, I don't know if the, if the subspecies, the, um, the Gulf Coast subspecies has the red eyes the way the Easterns do. I do know this is the largest subspecies of box turtle, the Eastern box turtles anyway. And they always have this, this really cool flare this really cool flare on the back of their shell like this, it oftentimes will curve up, and you can even see it right here. It curves up to the point where it makes a trough. Uh, it's really cool. The other, the other uh, eastern box turtles, the Florida box turtle, the, the three-toed, they don't do that. And you can see she's coming out. Look at those amazing claws. She loves to eat earthworms and, uh, and other kinds of invertebrates as well as funguses and things. She's like, what am I doing way up here? I'm not supposed to be that high up. And you can see her claws right there. She will dig down in uh, and rip things open to get worms and stuff out as she's moving through the substrate, through the leaf litter. Uh, they have a very plain carapace. The other box turtles at the Eastern subspecies have lots of markings of different kinds. Uh, this one's fairly plain and variable. Some will have markings really, really similar to, uh, to the Eastern. Um, other ones, are you gonna, oh, you're, gonna try to, you're gonna try to come on out? Some are gonna have almost a plain shell, almost just olive colored. And you can see she's like, okay, I'm done with this. I wanna get out of here. Really, really cool. She also has, I don't know if you can see, can you stick your foot out there? She has four claws on her back foot. You gonna put your back foot out? Four claws, there's one tucked underneath right there. This distinguishes her from the three-toed box turtle, which is yet another subspecies of box turtle of the, uh, the Eastern box turtles. So it's really kind of cool to find her. Oh my gosh, she's pretty old too. She's got some marks up here in her shell. You can see that little wound right there where it's really thin. Oh, but she's in great shape. And I know this is a female, by the way, because the plasterin is very smooth. It's, it's flat going all the way down. Remember the males have that concave plasterin so that during mating season, that will sit on the back of the female shell and will keep her very, very, uh, it will keep him from falling off. So, hey, you gonna say goodbye now? Can you wave? You can't wave. Look at those amazing legs. Oh, she's so cool. Goodbye, goodbye. All right, I'm gonna go put her back. I'm wanting to come down and Dude. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
These guys are absolutely everywhere. This is amazing. So I wanted to come down and do some bird watching and check out uh, the marsh area, look for some herons, some egrets, and lo and behold, look what I get. Here is a male. I know he's a male. He's got that concavity in his plaster on. So here's a male uh, Gulf Coast box turtle. Again, he's that plain shell, the largest of the subspecies of the Eastern. Very drab shell, not nearly the patterning you would find on the, the Florida box turtle or the Eastern or even the three-toed. So this is the, this is the plain Jane, but he's the monster. He's the big guy. Uh, doesn't have nearly the flaring on his, uh, on his carapace that the, that the female did, but you know, that's okay. That is, um, uh, he's probably simply not as old, but he's very much, look at him. He's like, yes, these guys just don't seem afraid. That's pretty cool. Um, the, the Easterns that I picked up and even some of the Florida ones, they close up in their shell real fast and they get all, uh, yeah, come here. They get all agitated. They get all nervous and they close up and they stay closed. These guys are out looking around. I mean, they're not afraid of anything. That's cause you're the big monster. You're going to go bathroom on me. You're the big monsters. Yes. Look at that amazing face. You're so cute. So, oh, oh, yep. Are you going to go, you want to close in, show people how you can close up the shell? Can you show people how you close the shell? Uh, that will actually, nope. He's like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to show you. Anyway, so there's the male. Oh, more bird watching ruined by reptiles. That's okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. That's fine. All right, I'm going to go keep trying to bird watch. I'm going to put him back. I'm out here in kind of a swampy area, maybe trying to get some warblers or something else. And I come along the green tree frog right there. It's one of the largest of the tree frogs. Now this one's kind of young. They can get to be uh, some decent size. One of the largest of the native tree frogs around this area. You can recognize the tree frogs. They have the rounded toe pads that they're using to stick onto the uh, onto the, the things, this is uh, onto the, whatever it is they want to climb. That's kind of a normal, normal habitat for these guys is on these, whoops, on these palmetto fronds. Come here. Can you come back here? Ah, come here. That's a good boy. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. All right. There we go. Ah, ah. Come here. There we go. You're okay. You're okay. There we go. There we go. There he is. So there's that green tree frog. You can recognize him. He's got that big, huge, you can see those rounded toe pads now real well, but he's got that nice, beautiful, clean stripe from his nose all the way down the side of his body. There's other tree frogs that look similar, like the squirrel tree frog that don't quite have that uh, clean of a line. They have, it starts as a line, then it breaks apart. And, but this guy's beautiful green. It's got that nice, clean line. Nice, nice tree frog. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna put him back. Go back up here, buddy. Once again, once again, my birding is interrupted by herping, but that's okay. Cause that's a cool kind of herping. All right, I'm leaving you alone now. So there you have it. You go after one thing, the birds and something else shows up. Just goes to show you Proverbs 25, 2 is right. It's the glory of God to hide a thing, the birds, and the glory of kings is to reveal things. I guess this time I'm king of the reptiles. <laughs>